of your project mm -hmm. and I just wonder what is it about Beethoven why do you feel so connected to his music well how can you not be connected to his music there is everything there is tenderness and passion and depth and sense of humor and um, I think it's pretty universal it's um, it speaks to me um, that's the short answer. <laughs> and there's a personal connection. I remember when I played my very first recital. Uh, well, let's put it this way. Very first performance, not the recital. Okay. Recital came later. I was seven years old and my dad gave me a music, music score. And that was Beethoven Sonatas. I was light years away from Beethoven Sonatas <laughs> at this point. I was playing some kid stuff. Uh -huh. uh, and it always been in my um, my plans to play Beethoven sonatas, mm -hmm. the whole thing. I remember I had this kind of a delusional plan when I was 16 years old, uh, what I'm going to do with myself in life, right? You know, like um, thinking small, usually. Uh, and the very first line on the list was the complete Beethoven sonatas. And so right, I'm right in the middle of it. Besides, there's somewhat... Uh, uh, an interesting connection, um, if you trace Beethoven lineage through 
teacher-student relationship. Mm -hmm. um, it goes this way. Beethoven taught Czerny. Czerny taught Lyschetitsky. Lyschetitsky taught Schnabel. Schnabel taught my teacher and it goes to me. The responsibility is enormous. Your teacher at Peabody? Yes. Okay. And his name is? Leon Fleischer. Leon Fleischer. And he's um, very, very, very well, well known. known. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. oh. And so I remember when we were doing um, Beethoven Marathon, which was, as I understand, one of his greatest ambitions that his students would play at. It was in 93, I believe. Uh, we were drawing lots and um, we played all Beethoven sonatas in one day. And I think it took from 10 o'clock in the morning up until 1, one in the morning of the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so people were camping out and sitting with thermoses and sandwiches. And um, I remember I played sonata number 4, went to sleep, then woke up, played sonata number 17, <laughs> went back to sleep and then played 23 and then enjoyed the rest of the evening. So that was, that was my thing. And I thought, hmm, this is phenomenal. I'd love to try this myself sometime. Yeah. So there I am. Okay. And um, when you're playing, it seems to me that the look on your face is very much like a meditation almost. Do you feel that way when you're playing? or? It depends on the music. It's, it's the intense concentration. Mm -hmm. um, when I close my eyes, which I do it sometimes, uh, it allows me to concentrate so much more at what I'm doing. It um, it's almost forces my hearing to be even more acute. Okay. Um, all system of working, memory and then <laughs> touch and yeah. everything like that, and I'm not distracted. Now, having said that, if I need to um, to jump somewhere, I'm not going to do it with my eyes shut. No, -uh. <laughs> <laughs> I will look. Mm -hmm. Does it feel also like like a physical exercise to you? Do you, is it very intense physically? Yes, yeah. absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. But you have to stay relaxed, otherwise the sound is going to be forced and um, you will never have the right stamina to play a concerto or recital. It, it's, kind of, it's kind of an amazing effort. You have to make sure you stay as loose and relaxed as you can as you're playing all this crazy hard stuff. Yeah, okay. Besides Beethoven, who are your favorite composers? How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Bach. Mozart, Beethoven already, I said that, mm -hmm. right? Um, Chopin, Mendelssohn, Schumann, Brahms, Schubert, <laughs> Liszt, um, Tchaikovsky, Rachmaninoff, Prokofiev, Shostakovich. Oh my God. <laughs> it's easier to say what I don't know. Like. Okay, what don't you like? Mm, I think... I'd like to stay away from composers that don't offer me anything as far as emotional, intellectual context. To me, they, how can I put it, they don't have my phone number. <laughs> uh, or I don't, better put, I don't have their phone number. Yeah. Um, and I sometimes either don't understand or don't like it. I give it a shot. I mean, I would listen to it ten times and if after ten times I still don't like it, I will not play it mm -hmm. because it's unfair. If I don't believe in this, why shall I perpetuate this fraud on stage? You know, I cannot, so to speak, sell it. Has it ever evolved? Like you've played it a couple times and then you start to get it? Hmm. No. no. <laughs> it's either yeah. there or it's not. It's either there or not, right. Okay. I think it's uh, on the level of instinct or something like that. Right. I will try it. Um, it Sometimes, you know, I have to play those things, let's say competition or something like that, or a concert. Um, I think I played a piece that I sort of, it a little bit grew on me, but never to a point as, oh, I'm going to rush and schedule to play this, my, my earliest opportunity. I think it was Hindemith Viola Sonata. At the end, uh, it made more sense to me. I understand how it's written. I know the logic and all that stuff, but it still doesn't do anything for me emotionally. 